Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Avatar Boiler Room Rewatches Smash, Season 1, Episode 3, Enter Mr. DiMaggio. I have with me Dr. Andrew Rimby and Mary DePippi here. We will be discussing this episode today. Andrew, do you want to go over for a second? Yes, thank you, Christian. Not like we planned this at all. So, yeah. very improv, like. So I just want to remind you all out there, first, the Broadway theme, I'll get to that. So if you've seen our Ivory Tower Boiler Room Instagram or TikTok, I am taking a group from the public, anyone who wants to go, to see Wicked. We're going in March in honor of all things green and St. Patrick's. Uh, not the weekend of St. Patrick's because no one wants that hellscape in the city with but wicked. I mean, we 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 want that energy, but maybe not St. Patrick's weekend. Um, so it's going to be the weekend before, and you have two options. You have the Saturday or the Sunday. So go to ivorytowerboilerroom.com. You'll scroll to events and you'll literally see the Google Google form. The Google form is embedded. Uh, so please just fill out your availability. You can click, you know, all the dates and times if you want. And I'm going to let you all know the first week of December, what the most popular one is. And then you'll put in your actual reservation and I'll get you all the price of how much tickets are. And then, you know, we'll go from there. See if I can add any add-ons for you. Um, so can't wait for all of that. And then we also, Christian, have our book clubs. So Mary, who's with us, has um, Haunted, Haunted Asylums. Um, I think it's Haunted Asylums, sanatoriums and prisons or it's haunted asylums prisons and no sanatoriums and prisons okay um and i'm doing um elizabeth winder who hopefully you all can meet soon uh parachute women it's about the women behind the rolling stones and these women were actually what really propelled the rolling stones to success so it's a really fascinating nonfiction book uh elizabeth is the writer of Maryland and Manhattan, which you all have heard about already on the Smash podcast. So November 19th, um, go to our Patreon because that's how you actually fill out a poll for us. I need to know what time you want to do the Zoom. Each book club is around 40 minutes. You get to be, you know, I'll be there. Mary's going to be there. It's very pri like a private group. You know, if you don't want to have your camera on, that's okay. If you don't really want to talk and you just want to listen, we're fine with that. Um, have your dinner, have your coffee, have your tea, you know, enjoy. Um, so join the ITBR book club level or the TCIA book club or join the professor level, which gives you actually all of these video rewatch episodes of Smash plus both book clubs for only $10 a month. So lots of things. Okay, thank you, Christian. <laughs> and back to you. No, not a problem. Guys, you guys ready to dissect this episode because there's a lot gonna talk about yeah are you talking about the opening scene of sex because that you. shocked me that when i first started shocker. watching <laughs> i was like is this how it's opening <laughs> yeah. wait and mary have you ever seen smash before i have not i only remember the previews from when it was on back in the day oh. Yeah. Oh, wait, Christian, from yes. last episode, now that Mary's here yes. and not my Veruca Salt backup dancer, which I had so much fun putting that clip <laughs> together. But and I was like, yeah, a backup dancer for Veruca Salt does not make sense when I acted it out. <laughs> um, but Mary, can you just clear up the callback where we both like reconnected at um, Broadway Pittman Theater? Was it five hours? I don't know why I felt like it was five hours. It felt like it might have been three and a half it was definitely long like i it was the longest thing i think i've ever been to to be honest um as far as that whole audition process was concerned um because it was a really unusual callback like sorry but christian i know had so many questions about it and i said it was very competitive feeling with like the chorus line it was very you walk forward you are not oh and we had to wait until after our cafe experience, which is why we yes. took that break together. And I'm like, you couldn't have told us before the cafe, like before our break. Seriously. Ridiculous. It was, I mean, given what we know now about this particular theater group, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say I'm surprised, but oh yeah, I digress. Um, 
Yeah, they were they were invo- they were embroiled in scandals. We'll say it like that, Christian. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Mary. Just, <laughs> I had like talked about the experience, but I do remember um, we were talking a lot about the dance combo and just like dissecting everyone who was there. It was mm-hmm. very smash like. That's why. Yes, um, I can relate. But yeah, <laughs> so the opening scene, Christian. Oh my god, of this episode. Oh, yeah, it's very. They're smashing. <laughs> that's true and we haven't even heard the title song yet i didn't i guess i didn't realize we don't really hear the song smash for a while you, you don't you don't mm-hmm. yeah i was surprised well i guess not because it's called enter the mr dimaggio that we get the mm-hmm. um one of the joe and Marilyn. this is not my favorite joe and Marilyn song um my favorite is history is made at night that's yep yeah I um, thought this was where it was conceived, but I was wrong. <laughs> like, no. Hey, that's why I like rewatching. I know. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And I know where I'm skipping, but Angelica Houston, again, I just love when she throws the cocktail at her ex. She, oh my God, she's a master at that. I need to take a, a, a course from her on how to do that. Cause it's like, I, I have a few people that I want to do that to. So, yeah. <laughs> she's just so good at her delivery. I, oh my God. I cried laughing because i was just like yes of course of course miss houston (laughs) oh my gosh well but in the opening again there's so many quotable moments in this episode christian like this one i thought had the most quotes that like i was jotting down vigorously like um oh when ivy says i like to work on her she's so serious she's like reading all the bios (laughs) she's looking at the filmography of Marilyn, and then he's like oh you're already working on her and she really thinks he's serious. I'm like, oh God. Girlfriend, you better was. leave that bed. Stop this. I feel oh. like he was. Like he was he, so I, serious. And then saw her reaction and was like, well, fuck. We can't do that again. If I, well, if, that, you know, she thinks. Is that why he's sleeping with her then? Basically, is because he sees her as the sex kit in Maryland. So. I think so. Yep. I think that has, yeah, that's definitely something it to has do. To have some appeal. Yeah. And then his excuse for why they're not in his ap- apartment. Oh my God. A stove. So many, a stove. Really? A your gas leak working? with a stove. Really? <laughs> I was Sorry, like, no, we're you... skipping, but it's, it's insane. Of like, I do not believe that for one second. <laughs> no, me either. I know. Yeah. Oh, he says, that's what we're doing, darling. Like, oh, that's not God. diminutive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Derek. I, I, Derek has ups and downs for me. Like, sometimes I really like his characterization, and other times, like, the beginning here, I... When he's with Karen, I see his humanity, but when he's with Ivy, I see his wolf-like behavior. Mm-hmm. And it's almost mm-hmm. like the two sides of Marilyn, how she was yeah. with the men in her life. He's... He's almost the Joe DiMaggio, I guess, in our scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, because Joe um, yeah. was um, starts to get very uncomfortable with Marilyn's success. Um, and a lot of the men in her life get uncomfortable that she doesn't need a man for her financial independence, but she still wants a man for comfort. So it's, I guess that's what we get in our musical number here, Christian, but. I know we're not at the musical number yet. But I know you love Marquise, Christian. Did you see some of the, uh, one of the musicals that was playing at this time when they filmed the scene? I did not, but I, I just, I just so love the, the homage that they do to, to the broad, to Broadway and the city itself. I love how the city likes sex in the city, that the city is a second, is a secondary character in the show. And I just love how they're just putting all these, uh, marquees and these mon- and these marquees all up in the background because I I feel like they need to implore that people love Broadway and they need to support the arts and this was their way of of getting that message out there and I and I absolutely love that. Yeah, yeah. It was Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie um, and Clyde. Yep. <laughs> Short lived, but um, they, people want a revival of it. I think. Um, I think they did. With, wasn't that with Laura Osnes and Jeremy yeah. Jordan? I believe. Or someone else, I think. 
Yeah, I that's when they awesome. were. That's that's that when they the were. One? Oh, okay. That's where they, when they were in it. But, oh, that kind of makes sense because Jeremy Jordan eventually becomes part of Smash, but <gasps> obviously not right now because right. it's in Bonnie and Clyde. That's right. Um, yeah, so he couldn't have been in the mo- in the TV show because he was on Broadway. Um, but again, I just love how they pull this cast together. It's the cast is so good. I mean, that's what makes this series. I mean, Deborah Messing. I love Deborah Messing. Um, it's Deborah Messing, gays. Have you ever seen the Andy I- Andy Iker? No. Wait, Andy Iker? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Who's Andy Iker? <laughs> Billy Eichner. <laughs> Andy Iker. I think he was re- in a. I think he was one of the Disney people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then Billy Eichner, Billy on the streets. He like runs around with Deborah Messing and says, it's Deborah Messing, you gays. Um, Yeah, but no. Oh, Andy Eicher is someone I knew at Stony Brook. Well, hi, Andy. (laughs) Oh, God. You could tell that we're recording late because I'm like getting names mixed up together. Um, But yeah, so the opening scene, that was very prey- Predatory-ish, again. And then yeah. we have Mr. Sneaky Ellis yet again. I, I, He irritated me this episode. I'm sorry. He, I just, I hated his sneaky, conniving ways. And it just like, Ellis, what the fuck are you doing? Don't do that. Don't steal a notebook. That's not yeah. good for you. Like, oh, I came up with the idea, so I need to get paid for it. No. That's what did that have to do to with him? Heart. Like his friends, I got it. Like what his friend's point was, I kind of understood in a licensing way, but then what he decides to do with the notebook, that has no. nothing to do with his idea. Mm-hmm. Now he's now he's a thief. That it's like Ellis. His mm-hmm. supposed girlfriend that was like, Oh, what are you doing with that? Did you no, see it is it? his girlfriend? Remember, mm-hmm. because yeah, that whole that whole scene just irked me the wrong way. I'm like, ill. <laughs> but I also yeah. like felt for her as well because I would do the same thing. Like as he's yeah. reading, she's like, "Okay, well," and he's like, "What? What? You thought this was wrong? You didn't want to know?" And she's like, "But, but I want to know now." Like you. Got <laughs> yeah. Well, and she says you're a secret agent. I know we're jumping ahead, but I feel that. Um... It's connected to what you're saying, Christian, about Ellis. So the whole you're a secret agent when the girlfriend, Ellis's girlfriend says that, is it basically he's playing the fence with sexuality to manipulate? That's um, what I Tom? think he's doing. He's, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like, oh, here's this, unless, you know, he could be bi, right? I'm, we don't really know, mm-hmm. but I, it did kind of know. seem like here's this straight guy who's going undercover to flirt with Tom. And but then I'm wondering now, is this has this been a plan set up from the beginning that he's going to pull one over on Tom and Julia? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it had nothing to do with Marilyn, like he was going to somehow just make his way to the top or um, manipulate them for I think we said it before, Christian, for a payday. Yep. Oh, the people in theater. <gasps> but those people exist. That's the relatable part. The ones who they just do. are conniving. They I do. know. Ugh. But I I do mm-hmm. love Ivy in this episode. I really... I feel for her. I feel like she's actually... In the beginning, isn't Ivy pretty vulnerable, in your opinion? I thought that she was open like more open than we've seen her before because i feel like when she's with her friends or in the professional setting she has this exterior maybe it's the performativity of marilyn she Monroe. has her mask on with um, yeah with her friends and especially in the theater in the theater world she she has her walls up but then when she's with derek um, derek um and with um oh my god Christian Boros character. It's just the names are escaping me right Tom, now. Tom. Tom, I feel like with those two, she can let her guard down a little. Yeah. And with other people, 
in her life, she has to protect herself, which I think we all do that sometimes. Right, Mary? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Yeah. Well, and Mary, since you had never seen this series before, were you like relating more to Karen or to Ivy? I guess Karen. Um, but also like there were some things about Karen that irked me as well. Like, for example, when she has that meeting with Derek, like, first of all, I don't I don't know how I feel about the boyfriend just showing up to her work meeting. I mean, I understand it's theater, but it's technically still a work meeting, Yeah, you know, <clears throat> but also, like, I mean, the way that she spoke to him, I wasn't thrilled with and also kind of like. I don't know. Like something like it almost came off entitled. Like, okay, I'm talented. Then, like, why didn't I get the part? Mm-hmm. It's also like, well, nobody knows you, sweetheart. Like, this is also a business. I know. You know, if they want this to sell, you you got to put someone. Like, you got to. I feel like just like how you work your way up in any business. Like, I feel like that's the same almost in theater. And she should be so happy. She's in the chorus of her first Broadway musical. Exactly. I'm like, aren't you gracious? Right. So like that irked me, but at the same time, like I was kind of like, eh, I see, I see more. I think of myself in her than than yeah. Ivy. And what do we think about her side plot uh, story with her going back home? That made sense to me with the Mrs. Smith anonymity of the small town life. Like I thought, I was like jotting vigorously in my notebook. Um, on the margin saying all framed by Marilyn and Joe. Like I, but I love that about the show is like, they always, we said it before Christian, Mm -hmm. but I feel like this episode really did it. Anytime there's a Marilyn Monroe musical number, it always references the actual characters, plot points in the show. So like everything in this episode is about couples and cheating and lies and wanting the more utopic, homegrown lifestyle of, you know, white picket fence, uh, Oshkosh, Bagosh, Iowa. Oshkosh is actually Wisconsin, but whatever. Speaking of Um, those Iowa citizens, I felt like when we saw her dad again and her parents, it's like, are they like, are they like representing an ad for like a homework card? Because when, when she goes to open the door of the car and he's like, hi, honey, what's going on? I'm like, damn. I thought it was an ad. Of? Why are you so happy? No, I literally thought it was an ad. Like, because there was a break before where ads were playing. And I'm like, oh, here's like a Hallmark movie for Christmas. You're right. And then I'm like, oh, it's the show. Um, and then her dad's like, yeah, did you bring the whole of New York with you? Ha ha ha. I'm like, can you not with that? But Please those like girls were kind way of. Way too country. This is like Hallmark. I feel like I'm watching a Hallmark movie. <laughs> but her friends, I thought the friends were acting as if they were in Bridesmaids. <laughs> right? I'm like, is this? Because they were so were just, off the wall. and chippy. And I'm like. Can but her pregnant some... friend was <gasps> so campy. Bar, why would you have a. a a baby shower in a in a bar, a karaoke bar of all places. That's this is what? Sweet Home Alabama, is what it, it reminds <laughs> That's me true. of. true. Like that moment, she's like, "You got a baby in a bar." <laughs> I think that's what that reminded me of. And I'm sorry, but uh, the redneck woman—I don't know what song it was. No, I don't know. Yeah, no, the redneck. Right. Redneck yeah. hot mess is what I'll call Redneck it. Hot uh, mess. And then they all get on the stage and they all like, no, no, no. no. That song definitely <laughs> did not stay with me. And I was very confused because I felt like we had landed in the deep South, which, you know, is great. But, you know, they're in Iowa. I don't it was very. That part didn't make sense to me, but. Um, it didn't, it didn't. I, I but then apparently the father gets to sit town. in homemade baker and some man that comes in to save her life <laughs> and the father smells like smoke the next day remember oh, and she's Jesus. smelling his no his shirt she's like you smell like smoke daddy well i'm all right like where's this going 
I don't know. Like, damn, the, these parents are just, they're on some kind of drug because they I don't know what makes them so happy. And they're, they're openly talking about her failures to her, like not to her face, but she can hear their conversation. I'm like, you don't mm-hmm. do that. You talk about it in your, in your behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. not, mm-mm. Yeah. but they're pretty famous that cup like the ones who played the parents i don't know i recognized i recognized the father yeah um, for sure yeah but yeah but i kind of liked when we saw um ivy um with michael yeah michael swift right that's who plays oh, joe dimaggio and can we talk uh, about her introduction it was giving a lot of Adam Pascal and Rent. Yes, I thought it was. I, I thought, thought it was, was Rent. Like, what? <laughs> oh wait, a Bruno Mars musical that he's in. I was like, wait, what song is this? Oh, it's Grenade. Of course it is. I forgot Bruno Mars was such a was such a thing back in twenty. I know. And they were like, yeah, he's definitely sexy. And I'm thinking to myself, what part of that performance reeked like sexy, sexual? Like some of it is sure. Like there were moments. But to Grenade? Grenade. That's the song you you chose for the sexy piece to like show off that he's sexy. You don't want your boyfriend to catch a grenade for you, Mary? How dare you? (laughs) Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Rimby, the host and director of the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. I hope you're enjoying what you're watching on the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. So to watch the rest of the episode, head to our Patreon. It is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash Ivory Tower Boiler Room. That's Ivory Tower Boiler Room. And You can watch the rest of the episode on our $5 a month membership called ITBR Student or join the ITBR Professor membership. It's only $10 a month. You get access to all of our videos. You get access to both of our book clubs, the Ivory Tower Boiler Room and the True Crime and Academia Book Club. Plus, you unlock all of our other episodes. So at the ITBR Student, you only get access to our weekly interviews and the True Crime and Academia episodes. For $10 a month, you get access to our ITBR rewatches, our Teaches series, and True Crime and Academia rewatches and Teaches series, plus the book clubs. Okay, can't wait to see you all on Patreon. And just a reminder, I also offer consultation services. It is $30 for your initial consultation. You get a one-hour private Zoom with me. And I will help you whether you want to create your own podcast and or media brand, you want to navigate academia as an undergrad or grad student, you need help with technology as it relates to teaching or media, do you want to expand your social media presence as an artist, writer, podcaster, or academic, or even crafting your public humanities identity? I will help you with my consultation services. You can also find that on Patreon as well. Okay. Thank you all for watching and for supporting the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. Bye.